Welcome back to the Guardian Project Podcast. This is episode 166, and I'm your host, Andy, and boy, am I thirsty. Coil, can you quench that? I don't play blue. I can't do that. No. Oh, well, it's only two mana. They they played a really good spell. I mean, I'll 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 play the two. Just probably. just full counter spell it. Oh, you're gonna pay the two for pay, them. I'm gonna I'm gonna float two mana using some <laughs> sort of combination of what cere- ceremony bells or whatever that card is. I don't know the battle bond rock. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> but boy, am I thirsty. <laughs> and I'm your other host, Mike. And call it a hunch, but I don't think the Phyrexians are gonna win this war with. They keep recruiting lazy people. Their agents are caught sleeping on the job constantly. Oh, they are sleeping agents. Yes, they sure are. Oh, they just need a little nap. A little nappy poo. Why just not? a little nap. <laughs> Please listen carefully. And this is the podcast about Commander. Our favorite Magic the Gathering format. We have a lot like a lot to talk about this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically, we learned about what we're going to uh, see over the next 12 months uh, from the Wizards Presents uh, announcement. And uh, starting with Dominaria United, which comes out in just a few weeks, um, we're going to get a lot of sets, some of which I'm very excited to see. Uh, following Dominaria United, we are going to get the Brothers War, which is... Um, also on Dominaria. It says the magic story stays on Dominaria, but takes us back to its distant past for the devastating conflict between brothers Urzra, 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 Urza and Mishra combined Urzra uh, with the brothers war. Uh, Funny enough, the actual set, the set, uh, the set code is bro. (laughs) B-R-O. Which I really enjoyed. That's awesome. Uh, and, and it says, as we follow familiar planeswalkers traveling uh, to one of Dominaria's key historical moments, we will learn more about the people and the places of the time and the awesome power that colossal robots and machines of war offer. So I, I know this is a really popular story. I've heard a lot of people suggest reading the Brothers War novel. I've not read it, but um, we're obviously going to get new Urza and Mishra cards. And I really can't ask for a whole lot more. Yeah, no, just new Mishra. That's more. I I call the old Mishra unplayable in Commander. It's not unplayable, but a more playable but kinda, Mishra. Would a be more great. playable Mishra is all we ask for. That's, that's it. Right. Just a little ask. And following that set, we are going to have Phyrexia All Will Be One in the first quarter of 2023. Phyrexia All Will Be One continues the magic story where it left off in the Brothers War as the battle against the Phyrexians of the modern magic era heats up. So we'll probably see all those Praetors come back, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe different versions of the same Praetors. Would the, be main, cool. the main art is of Elishnorn, mm-hmm. and if it's anything like the previous Elishnorn, I'm not looking forward to it. Some of these Praetors have been, honestly, if not as powerful, more powerful. The new Jenga Taxius, I feel like it it has a bigger impact than the previous Jenga Taxius. Because that one at least happened at the end of your turn. So you had a chance to at least remove it. The new Jenga Taxius happens as soon as it's on the board. Yep. Like it's, it just, it does its thing. So we'll see. I'm excited to see what the new Elishnor does. Um, continuing uh, on from that, we have March of the Machine, which is the epic conclusion of the four set story arc that began with Dominary United. So coming out in just a couple weeks and ends with magic forever changed. So it says, how will magic change? Once the dust settles, we'll take a closer look with March of the Machine, the aftermath, which will also be a small set release, providing an epilogue to the events, tying up loose ends of the big big story arc so we're gonna we're gonna find out a lot about the phyrexians and in this artwork and a lot of what's being speculated online is that uh some of these planes are either merging or maybe teferi is bringing people in from different times because there's definitely uh zendikar and kamigawa Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. maybe even ravnica or innistrad like in the artwork it, there are multiple planes represented in this artwork. Definitely Theros. It looks like there's a god from Theros here. Perhaps everybody is coming together like uh, in Endgame mm-hmm. to fight the Phyrexians, which funny enough, I would have assumed was what we what we would get for like the Eldrazi. 
But I okay, guess maybe the sure. Phyrexians are bigger baddies they're, than the they're, Eldrazi. They're more organized. That is they for are sure. definitely organized. They have project managers. Yes. So so time rifts almost destroyed Dominaria in the past. Maybe time rifts are going to be their only solution to saving Dominaria in the present. And then maybe everybody can travel wherever they want. Everyone's go a Go on a nice little now. vacation. Yeah, everybody can go on vacation to like... Ixalan? What place... Do you go to Ixalan? I mean, I mean, they have beaches for sure. You just got to worry about dinosaurs is the problem there. Well, and vampires, but... I know. mean, it's just like Jurassic Park and everybody makes... It okay, not everybody makes it out okay in Jurassic Park, <laughs> but a lot of people make it out okay in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> All right, following that, we are going to return to the world of Eldrain in yes. the set Wilds of Eldrain. In the third quarter of 2023, the storybook world of Eldrain awaits as we venture beyond the kingdoms with the Wilds of Eldrain, a return to plane filled with fairy tale wonder and danger, and hopefully not another completely broken planeswalker, and that would be great. I, I, as much as I hate saying this, and I, I did tweet it, like, let's skip to Eldraine. I don't have a stake in the Phyrexian story. That's just me. I wasn't sure. around when it started. I loved Eldraine. It's one of my top three sets. I think we've talked about it in our Discord. I might have even tweeted. I love it. I was happy for the set to leave standard because it was just, it was a lot. It was, it was a set that might have been it wasn't might it was more powerful than the other sets that were in standard at the time mm -hmm. but i'm ready to go back but we had throne of eldraine this is wilds of eldraine what other of eldraine are we going to see uh, i the, feel like we could see like the underground but it could be like furniture chairs of eldraine <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like when Eldraine came out, that is when I started hearing about all of the art themed decks because there was Chair Tribal with with um, with uh, Kenrith, the returned king. So you finally uh, had a five shoot. color. A throne is like a chair. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the the, the couches of Eldraine. Oh, yes, no. the sofas, <laughs> the sofas, if you will. <laughs> uh, and the adventure doesn't stop there for magic. Next year, after that, we are going to go back to Ixalan with the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. In the fourth quarter of 2023, we re we return to the plane packed with pirates and dinosaurs in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. We've seen the sea and land of Ixalan, but what lurks beneath? Yeah, Honestly, I just more. want to see flip cards. Did you okay. say more? You're probably just more, more pirates, dinosaurs, and merfolk, which they don't mention here. But Underground dinos? Yeah, I mean, like dinosaurs that like... I mean, I, I guess technically a dinosaur doesn't swim. That's like classified as a thing that isn't a dinosaur. In magic, it'll still be a dinosaur, but... Aren't crocodiles or alligators one of them? Aren't they technically dinosaurs? Des descendants of, yes, but I don't think they're... Like, they're actually dinosaurs yeah i don't i don't remember where in the hierarchical stance dinosaur is like if that's the kingdom it's not the kingdom it's the animal kingdom but like if it's the genus or something in there so i mean if you know biology get me in the comments but, but there's <laughs> yeah there's definitely going to be merfolk i mean the artwork oh, yeah. here that is in this announcement in this post is of merfolk so pirates dinosaurs merfolk there were also a lot of vampires and i i, mm -hmm. I could assume vampires i mean they're underground they don't they don't want to be in the light based I mean, on some vampire tropes. Yeah, but I think the Ixalan vampires praise they don't the care. sun. Yeah. They don't care. But like it maybe we we're getting the Twilight vampires this time around. So yeah. like we we've got the full Ed Edward Cullen happening now. Oh perfect. Um, All the I, I loved Ixalan. I thought it was super fun to yeah. draft. Was the set as powerful as everything around it? Maybe not, but I'm ready to see it again. And I can't believe it's been five years since we've been to Exelon. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a really Crazy. long time. Crazy. But we've got a lot more coming in store as well in 23, uh, 2023. Dominator Remastered is coming out. It's going to reach across all of Magic sets to bring together a mix of familiar and nostalgic cards representing the breadth of Dominary's history from our earliest sets through modern day. Yes, we also get the long-awaited Universes Beyond set, Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle-Earth. So um, we're going to see... I think this is the first, yeah, this is the first universes beyond full um, set. Full set. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. be very cool from my opinion, for sure. 
Yeah, I I have seen parts of each of the films, um, so I'm excited <laughs> to see what it brings to magic. I, it's listen, they're long films, they're long yeah. films. Yeah, um, that's why you got to watch the extended version and all three of them in a row, all in one day. Listen, if I'm already watching three hours, make it five. Yeah, it was exactly. The difference. exactly. Uh, <laughs> and then more from Universes Beyond and Secret Layer. We've got Warhammer 40k decks coming to us. Yes, we have Doctor Who Commander decks coming to us. And then we've got the Secret Layer August Super Drop. So that kind of brings us into our next item. The August Super Drop is out. Um, there are actually a bunch of really cool things coming out with this Super Drop. And it is the first one that I kind of snap ordered. I already purchased it and I already nice. had my account debited. So um, I bought the full bundle here. So the first up is the Showcase Dominary United Textured Foil Edition. This is coming with a textured foil showcase, stained glass, Arcadia Sabbath, Chromium, Nicol Bolas, Vivectus Asmati, and Palladia Moore. So all very cool. Dragons from Dominaria. You can get that for $49.99. Yeah, those are the original printings of all those dragons from, from Legends originally, right? Uh, well, Palladium Wars is a, is a newer card, but I believe these are all the original five referenced, okay, okay. like elder dragons, awesome. like story wise. Yeah, uh, we also have in the memoriam Jaya Ballard, uh, might be here. a little spoiler here if you haven't yeah. read the story, but Wizard spoiled it, not us, so you didn't hear nope. it from us. Uh, but in this set, you're going to be able to get a Jaya Ballard planeswalker, uh, Jaya's Immolating Inferno a pyretic ritual, a repercussion, and a pyromancer's goggles. Now with legendary uh, artwork frame, which I don't know if it actually had legend, like the, um, you know, that, it didn't like, have curly... an extended border. No, like, what, well, even like the curly, the curliness on the, um, uh, by the, the name of the card for legendary. Yeah. Like the, the legendary border. No, mm -hmm. I don't believe this card had that at all. Yeah. So, so this it's the, first the artwork on these is great. Repercussion so strong oh yeah i actually this one this one's really cool i like this one a lot next we have artist series nils ham this includes a deep glow skate a tireless tracker a contagion engine and a sword of truth and justice all of these featuring a little adorable oof you can get these for uh 39 39.99 39 foil or 29.99 non-foil this is my favorite of all the art series because it's got deep glow skate i love deep glow skate so much this one has solid cards. In oh, it. This one is another, great. if you don't have proliferate engines or double planeswalker, honestly, all these cards are good. They're useful in plenty of decks. I could easily name many decks that I have all of these cards in. Oh, easily, easily. Uh, next, we have artist series Victor Adame Minguez uh, with a Knight Exemplar, Knight of the White Orchid, Lord of the Undead, and Compost. I run Knight of the White Orchid and Lord of the Undead. I've got a Wilhelt deck, and then Knight of the White Orchid is rampant white. I like this one. I don't run Compost or Knight Exemplar, but two of the three, not bad. And honestly, these artworks are great. Yeah, fantastic artworks. The next one is my favorite. This is Imaginary Friends. This one includes uh, a, a Borderless Matter Reshaper, a Toothy Imaginary Friend, Pure Imaginative Rascal, and the Gitrog Monster. All of them in like a charcoal watercolor children's artwork style. So this reminds me of like where the wild things are. Sure. Cutest Gitrog Monster of all time. This one, solid. I don't run Matter Reshaper in anything, but the other three are are great. So this one again, foil $39.99. Actually, all of these that are not the, the textured foil edition are $39.99 for foil and $29.99 for non-foil. This one is great. I, I do love that even though Gitrog is the cutest Gitrog they've ever printed, it still has an arm hanging out of its mouth. So they kept my favorite part of the Gitrog <laughs> monster artwork. Um, I love him. Love but, him. But lastly, but certainly not least, we are getting the Dan Frazier Ally and Enemy Talismans printed in both a foil etched and non foil versions. Um, so I we love already, these. We got the signets before, and now we got the talismans. So thank you, Dan Frazier, for producing all gorgeous. Awesome if you're, if you, yeah, if you don't have these, honestly, of all of these bundles we've ever gotten since 2020 when Secret Layer started, if 
I mean, personally, this is the one that I would pick up. It has so many staples and yeah. things that I run, and I just hate that word so much. But this is really good. There's a lot of value here. So if you're looking, uh, if you're if you're interested in looking at these, you can pick these all up until um, Monday, September 19th is when pre-orders are up. Now, last week I mentioned on the show I had a little bit of homework. We talked about shamans last week, and I checked my Exava deck right because I was playing with plus one plus one counters, mm -hmm. and. I only have I only have one shaman and it's Ashley and the Pilgrim, which makes sense. But um, there's so there's really not a ton of overlap in Exava and shamans for that Rage Forger, which we mentioned. But Rage Forger is probably a decent inclusion if I wanted to add more stuff that cares about plus one plus one counters. Um, but only one, which is surprising. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we we looked at how many cards were just like accidentally shamans and stuff, and yeah, dude, yeah, I, I'm surprised that it's only one. But I guess Rakdos, I figured I would have had more. Yeah, I guess the Rakdos, the Rakdos, uh, unless you were like a Judith or something, then you weren't going to be a shaman. Yeah, nope, you definitely weren't. All right, so listen up, everybody, because we got a giveaway coming out soon. So we're going to be giving away a Dominary United Commander deck. Not one, but actually one of each of the Dominary United Commander decks. So watch out for that uh, that giveaway on Twitter and make sure to follow us everywhere. You can follow us uh, ahead of time. You don't have to do it ahead of time, but you should do it ahead of time anyways. Uh, because then you won't miss it. That's right, because we're also going to be giving away uh, another giveaway. Andy, do you want to talk about this other giveaway we want to do? I sure do. In in inspiration and in honor of our most popular tweet where we did not say very many kind things about Zetelpa Primal Dawn. <laughs> Actually, we didn't say anything negative. Nothing I negative. just said, I can't believe this has been printed seven times. Why? And then all... 500 or so plus people showed up to say, because it's really good. Um, okay, I yeah. hear you. Mm -hmm. So in honor of Zetelpa's eighth printing, because it's being reprinted again, we're going to give away one of each copy of Zetelpa that's been reprinted. So yes. eight whole copies of Zetelpa Primal Dawn. We're going to give that away as well. And make sure you get in on that because you will you will literally receive $8 worth of cards. Yeah. For eight times a night, you'll be able to say 1-800-are-you-flapping-slapping-clapping, get them in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. And that might be a staple giveaway going forward. Anytime Zetelpa is reprinted, we're going to do a giveaway. So you can watch out for that. Now, before we continue, we have to thank every single one of you who are listening to us every single week who comes back especially our patrons we cannot thank you enough if you want to support us you can head to patreon.com slash guardian project pod and donate for any dollar amount and you can find us online on youtube instagram twitter um, you can just hop on over to google and search guardian project podcast where you can find our website you can email us at guardian project pod at gmail.com please find us everywhere that you can Yes. Now, Mike, what are we chatting about this week? Um, today, we have one of my favorite kind of episodes. This is a patron deck tech. So we're going to be looking at patron Bert's uh, Ikra Shadiki, the Usurper, and Timna, the Weaver, Soul Sisters deck. Yes, I am very excited about this. We should go uh, check out this deck because it's going to give us life. We is this this actually might be our very first patron deck tech featuring partners. Coil, have we had a partners deck? No. I don't think we have. I don't think so. We may have had a companion deck in the past, but for sure this is our first partners patron deck tech. Yes. So let's start with a brief explanation and then we'll jump into the commanders. So this is an Ikra and Timna life deck, life equilibrium deck. And the idea was based on a joke at his shop, which was the most aggressive thing you can do in magic is life gain. So the game plan here is to gain as much life while being as aggressive as possible in the early game to use some of the cards and that life in the late game. It's also the next deck that Bert plans on foiling out. So he asked us to let him know what we think of the deck and if we can come up with any amazing cards that he may have left out. So he broke this up into three different categories, life gain, life gain payoffs, and then using life as a resource. So let's talk about the commanders. I'll start with Ikra Shadiki, the Usurper, a 3-7 Naga Wizard for three black and a green that has menace and says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. 
and it has partner. Yeah, it's so good. I love this card so much. I Do you run this in any of your decks personally, Andy? And I don't have a single Ikra in any deck that I own. And I love playing against your Ikra deck <laughs> with Sakushima because it's just like legendary. But this Menace and Life Gain, mm-hmm. is, it, it's a 3-7. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, you don't want to block it because it's got such a big booty that you're not going to be able to kill it anyways. And you have to block it with two different things if you're going to. It's Exactly. It usually gets in there. Well, a partnered up with Ikra, we have Timna the Weaver also going to have some life gain on this one. For one, a white and a black, you get a 2-2 human cleric with lifelink um, and a little bit of life sink here as well. So at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you may pay X life or X is the number of opponents that were dealt combat damage this turn. If you do, you draw X cards. Um, so being able to have card draw in your command zone is obviously really good. Uh, I like the fact that you're playing, uh, that Bert's playing with a five mana commander and a three mana commander. So not on the same mana, uh, something you can do the turn in between. Um, and then they're going to build off of each other. Um, so when Timna gets in, it's not just going to be for two lifelink. It's going to be for two lifelink plus gain another two when Ikra is out on the battlefield. Um, and Ikra gaining seven life when it gets in being harder to block because it has menace means you're probably going to be able to draw even more cards on your second main phase yeah card draw being in the command zone i know you mentioned this in our show notes it's just it's so powerful because you can draw three extra cards a turn if assuming your opponents aren't blocking it's just so strong Mm -hmm. i love this so much but besides swinging in with bert's creatures and gaining life from ikra there are so many ways to gain life so let's start with the namesake of the deck which is soul sister so if you're not familiar there's lots of creatures here that when other creatures enter the battlefield you gain a life the first being soul warden a one one human cleric for a single white mana that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield you gain a life yeah great and card there's also uh for one white for a one one human cleric you get soul's attendant that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield you may gain one life so literally the exact same card um from two different sets and just with a different name (laughs) yes but let's move to green for once again the same card Mm -hmm. essence warden a one one elf shaman for green mana it says whenever another creature enters the battlefield you gain a life yeah perfect i mean this one's even a shaman we should have mentioned this one last week oh my gosh shaman's deck Uh, and the last one we have here is actually the newest of the bunch uh from our 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 latest innistrad set we have lunark veteran for one white it says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control you gain one life and this is a one one um so this is the one that's different it doesn't gain life when your opponent's creatures enter the battlefield but it does have a uh, disturb cost and disturb you can cast it for its alternate disturb casting cost from your graveyard and uh, lunark veterans disturb cost is one in a white that gives you luminous phantom which is a flying one one spirit cleric that says whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield you gain one life so some extra upside there um maybe some board wipe protection or maybe you want to cast this right before a board wipe so that you can basically uh, get a free fumigate and if you're not aware fumigates a, a board wipe where you get to gain life based on the number of creatures that die honestly i I always forget that we have so many of these cheap creatures that gain life. Mm-hmm. Like these these types of decks that gain life and want to pay life or drain life, they have so many like cards at at their fingertips that they can use to to really honestly take advantage and start this engine very early. Yeah, and it's and you have four different ones that you can you can do and in in commander you play with a 100 card deck, but if you have four, there's probably a good chance that you're going to see at least one of them. And, exactly. Yeah. You'll see at least one every game, hopefully. Um, Now, the rest of the life gain strategies don't really want to leave a single phase of the turn without gaining some life. So let's start with Twilight Prophet that cares about the upkeep. So Twilight Prophet is a 2-4 flying vampire cleric for two black black. It has flying and ascend. So ascend is if you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have the city's blessing, reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. Each opponent loses X life and you gain X life for X is that card's converted mana cost. So here you really do want the city's blessing. If you, I mean, you've got a lot of lands Mm -hmm. and by the time you're paying this on, on, on turn four, and if you were able to get out maybe even one or two of your life gain creatures we mentioned, you, you get the, the city's blessing pretty easily. So Twilight Prophet is, is a wonderful card. Um, one that I was thrilled to see on the list because it's a pretty pricey card. It's cheapest version around $11, but it does work. A card that no one really wants to remove, but you might actually have to remove this eventually. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's different. So there's a lot of cards out there that like will have you lose life, um, reveal the top card of your library, lose life. But this one, you get card advantage plus you get to drain your opponents. I mean, what? how could you go wrong here on top of a flying 2-4? Think about that 4 toughness with an Ikra out there. So now you're going to be able to gain 4 life whenever it gets in. It's God Evasion. Draw more cards with Timna. This card, this card might be uh, a, a lightning rod in this particular deck for sure. Some people might say it slaps. It does. It slaps for that's what hard. That's what the kids say. The kids, the kids are saying that. <laughs> I'm so, old now, okay? I get to say this. <laughs> <laughs> so now when we move into the combat step, we have a couple of equipment that we want to talk about. The first one being Shadow Spear. Shadow Spear for one generic mana. You get a legendary artifact equipment that says equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample and lifelink. You can pay one generic mana to have permanence your opponent's control lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn and has equipped for two so very cheap artifact to get out on the battlefield early very cheap to equip the plus one plus one is whatever the lifelink and trample are actually particularly nice on so Ikra, good on ikra shadiki uh specifically ikra's ability doesn't trigger unless you actually deal combat damage to your opponent so being able to give ikra trample means your opponents can no longer block with two one ones and get away with you not uh being being able to get in and then lifelink on top of it so now you're gaining you know even if they do block all of ikra's damage you're still going to gain some life from the lifelink ability uh, and then it just has this generic ability to just make it so that you can remove your opponent's permanence it's pretty great I I love that you can remove hexproof and indestructible from your opponent's mm -hmm. permanence here, but I, if I th the more I see it, I think Shadow Spear might be my favorite equipment yeah. like of all time. I just love this card, Theros Beyond Death, home run, and I hope everybody picked up their copies because this card is twenty dollars yeah. now. I cannot believe it, but yeah, I, think, I would say maybe Feast and Famine. I still like more than this, sort of Feast and Famine, but Shadow Spear is definitely in the top five. Shadow which Spear. Is saying something so so good now let's say your creature didn't quite make it through combat rest in peace we're gonna get him back though with the sword of light and shadow it's an equipment for three mana it says equip creature gets plus two plus two and has protection from white and black and whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player you gain three life and you may return one target creature from your graveyard to your hand equip two so if your creatures aren't making it through combat or you just need to get one of those life gain creatures back that Got removed because it became problematic. You can just get it right back with Sword of Light and Shadow. Yeah, conveniently, you gain three life, which you're hoping to lose every single second main phase with your Timna the Weaver. So hopefully that all evens out. It, um, it will, yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, we did talk about how uh, giving lifelink to your non-lifelink creatures like Ikra is going to be really uh, good in this particular deck. So why not do it to all of your creatures with a card like Whip of Erebos, a legendary enchantment artifact for two black black that says creatures you control have lifelink, which is already a really good card in its own, but it also has an activatable ability of two black black and tap to return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. So this activatable ability, if you're playing like a reanimation style deck, like maybe if you do have the Sword of Light and Shadow, you don't necessarily want to bring that creature back because it is going to have to get exiled. But late game, I mean, you don't care. You probably like, I only have one turn left. Yeah. I don't care what's going to happen. I'm Who just cares? going to bring it back. Yeah, why yep. not? Bring it right back. Great, great card. I don't see this often enough, but it is a really good reanimate card. And again, another card where it's an enchantment artifact and like one that you feel like you don't really want to remove. You usually just want to remove a creature. So this mm -hmm. card usually sits out and just gains you value over time. Oh, yeah. Now, we've also got Tristani Selesnia's voice, a 2-5 Dryad for green, green, white, white. It says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness, and then you can pay one, a green, a white, and tap it to populate. So you create a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. In this case, we're probably just going to gain a ton of life of, of basically just creatures entering the battlefield. Um, it's a 2-5, it's a which also works really well with Igra Shadiki. Yeah. And, and and vice versa too, right? Because you gain life based on toughness. So when Ikra enters, you get to gain seven life. So <laughs> really, really strong card. <laughs> um, the next card we have here is one that has gotten me 
definitely uh, a few times. I don't know. We if have I've... both died on stream to this. Actually, <laughs> I believe to one of the other scrap trawlers. So Bert is one of our, our scrap trawlers. Andy Zupke had a sun scorch regent and killed mm-hmm. us on stream because both you and I said, I don't think this is going to be a problem. And then turns out it was. Yeah, it's always a problem. This this thing should be <laughs> a lightning rod. So sun scorch regent for five mana, three white, white. You get a four, three flying dragon. It says whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on sun scorch regent and you gain one life um just the fact that it gets plus one plus one counters it makes it like a torrent a flying torrent mauler uh which is a changeling where any if anyone casts a spell you get to plus one plus one counter on it but then you're also gaining life on this and we're going to talk about some life gain payoffs that are going to make that like one plus one plus one counter potentially like two or three plus one plus one counters every single time someone else casts a spell and then you like if you slap sort of uh, uh sort of black and white on here what is it called sort of light and shadow um and and you're playing a black white deck or your only removal is in black or in white which are two very popular for for removing creatures you're no longer going to be able to deal with this except maybe chump blocking it in the air and good luck because next bert's going to stick the uh the the spear the shadow spear on it and and they'll have trample yeah sun scorch regent is never a problem until it is and that's a really big problem big problem. it happens every time and i underestimate that stinking dragon Mm -hmm. it's gonna get me so i expect to lose to it some more next up though we have grim feast an enchantment for one black and a green it says at the beginning of your upkeep grim fest deals one damage to you uh, I'm sorry, Grim Feast. And then whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from play, gra- uh, gain an amount of life equal to that creature's toughness. So um, if you've got board wipes or just creatures dying in general, you're gaining life off of their creatures dying. So board wipes become even better with Grim Feast. Yeah, or if your opponents even have to block something. It's like, as long as you can gain one life per turn, this thing is paying for itself. It's not like cumulative life pay or anything like that um but now bert did want to eventually foil out this deck and i have some bad news uh grim feast is on the reserve list was printed in mirage and it is not available in foil except for mtgo and i don't think bert wants to foil this out in mtgo i think bert wants to foil this out in real life um so you'll either have to find a replacement for this or maybe you can find uh someone to do a foil peel on it or yeah. something in our community um but i i i would i would definitely not take this out of the deck because uh, <laughs> looking through the list this is i think my favorite card in the whole deck i love this well thing. welcome to my world with an equal uh i'm sorry an equinox or yes. uh other other cards like um Oh gosh, there's a card that has the undaunted mechanic where you just can't foil them out. So I've got Annoying Dar deck with two non-foil cards because they don't exist today. The, the but, Equinox um, that I drive is silver. Does that count as foil? Is that a it foil? Does. Okay. It does. It it does. It's definitely shiny after you've gone through the car wash. Oh, that's not foil then. That is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a couple other cards here that do gain life, but they're more coincidental than um, actual life gain strategies here. We have the Great Henge, which is going to tap for two green and gain life uh, every time that you tap it for mana. And uh, it's going to have when your creatures enter the battlefield, they're going to get plus one, plus one counters. You're going to get to draw cards. A very, very powerful card in green. Um, but I don't think the tapping it to gain two life is the real motivator there. And then Noxious Gearhawk, uh, which is a an artifact creature in black that has an enter the battlefield effect that destroys one of your opponent's creatures and you gain life equal to the toughness of the creature that you destroy with it. Um, actually does synergize very well with Grim Feast because you're actually going to get to gain double the life uh, when you destroy that creature. Um, but I think these cards are more in here for uh, the other value that they give and the removal that they give than for the life gain strategy itself. Yeah, I like those. I, I I think both cards are fantastic. The Great Henge is so strong. And just, I feel like the, the two life gain is just like, it's like a perk. It is. Oh, I'll take two life. Sure, thanks. Now, let's look at some payoffs. So we've got life gain payoffs. There's there's a lot of abilities here that are going to trigger every time Burt gains life or during certain phases based on how much life has been gained up to that point. So let's look at instant speed. The first one being Arc. Angel of Thune. For three white, white, you get a three, four flying lifelink angel that says whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Um, the number of times that I've 
not had removal for an Archangel of Thune and it is mm-hmm. just spiraled out of control. It feels like, I feel like Archangel of Thune is very much like a Cather's Crusade oh, for yeah. life gain decks, right? They gain a life, put a counter on it. They gain life as much as I put out token creatures in a human deck with a Cather's Crusade. So Archangel of Thune is a lightning rod if I've ever seen one and I never have the answer to it and it wins games. I love this card. Yeah, it's really, really strong. Um, I think probably the strongest of the life game payoffs in this deck. So if you're playing against Burt right now, listening to this episode and you're wondering if this is the lightning rod, this is the lightning rod. At this exact moment, I hope this happens. <laughs> Everyone's listening to the show together and Burt has just played Archangel of Thune. That's right. <laughs> Good no, luck, Burt. Now, to continue with that life gain and plus one, plus one counter strategy, we have Heliod Suncrown. For two and a white, you get a legendary enchantment creature god. Five, five, indestructible. It says as long as your devotion to white is less than five, Heliod isn't a creature. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And for one and a white, you have another creature gains lifelink until end of turn. So we already talked at least twice this this episode about how giving your other creatures that don't have lifelink lifelink is really, really powerful. So having that activated ability um, and being two less mana actually than Archangel of Thune does definitely even this out. Um, it's indestructible, so it's going to be hard to remove. It's not always going to be a creature. In fact, I would I would say probably not a creature most of the time um, in this three color deck that we have here. Uh, you can only target one creature with the plus one plus one counters, but since you are focusing on soul sister like effects, um, you're going to be able to put a lot of plus one plus one counters on this one creature. No walking ballista in this deck, so no comboing out like that or anything, um, but definitely here for the value. Yeah, also a lightning rod, but one that you have to remove through exile yes. because it's going to be really difficult to remove this card. I like mm-hmm. Heliod Suncrowned a lot. Next we have Cleric class and enchantment. Um, this is actually a class enchantment. So for one white mana, you get an enchantment that says if you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one. You can pay four to move up to level two. When you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. And you can pay five more mana, four and a white, to move to level three. When this class becomes level three, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You gain life equal to its toughness so it's it's just a very strong card it synergizes with with some uh you know generic things that the deck's already doing i like the class cards and i like seeing cleric class being played in the deck yeah yeah huge i mean just keep it at level two pretty much the whole game until you really need the reanimation at the end i wish you could level it up to level three to level four to level five and every time you level it up you're actually uh you know, get to re- keep reanimating every time. It might be broken if you do that, and that's probably why they don't have. Hey, maybe it, but... we'll get uh, we'll we'll get uh, get upgraded classes like we have upgraded sagas now. Oh, maybe we'll maybe. get some upgraded classes like like I don't know retraining. Right? I have a license and in insurance, and we have to take a new <laughs> class every every two years. Maybe you can take the level three every couple of years so maybe we'll we'll get that yeah, in the just future. like when you just like when you sit in your D pod that you've been playing with for like four years already it's like let's just start with level 15s today like, okay <laughs> why not Ex- exactly it's just it's it's like this class where but now you're level 15 so you can pay yes. that four mana up to 15 times who knows that would be wonderful. All right, so the, <laughs> the next card we have here uh, is actually a double face card from Strixhaven. We have Valentine, Dean of the Vein, which is for one black. You get a 1-1 one, one legendary creature vampire warlock with menace and lifelink. This is of a non-token creature an opponent control would die. Exile it instead. When you do, you may pay two generic mana. And if you do, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. This is going to synergize really well with Timna, another menace and lifelink creature that you're going to be able to maybe get in, uh, get some card draw early on. But the backside is really where this card is going to shine, and that's Lisette, Dean of the Root. For two green green, you get a legendary creature, Human Druid 4-4. This is whenever you gain life, you may pay one generic mana. And if you do, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain trample until end of turn. So a very similar to Archangel of Thune type effect. Unfortunately, you do have to pay one generic mana, but you're going to be able to gain trample uh, as well. And and that's going to be huge. Worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's going to synergize well with Timna again to gain more things, but then also it might just win you the game. With Archangel of Thune, you're just going to trample over everybody. 
It's so good. It's oh, so yeah. good. Next up, we have Voice of the Blessed, a 2 2 spirit cleric for white, white. It says, whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Voice of the Blessed. And as long as Voice of the Blessed has four or more plus one plus one counters on it, it has flying and vigilance. And then as long as it has 10 or more plus one plus one counters on it, it has indestructible. So super easy in this deck to get 10 plus one plus one counters on it. You can just keep growing it from there. Vigilance and flying honestly makes it one of the stronger like attackers and blockers in this deck. I don't see Voice of the Blessed come up a lot, but it works really well in an abs and life gain deck. Yeah, in fact, one of the things that we're giving away also has Flying Vigilance and Indestructible, and people call it a really good card, Satalpa. This one wow. just doesn't have Double Strike. This, this <laughs> Voice of the Blast, it doesn't have Double Strike, but it could also get way bigger. I mean, this thing could be like a 30-30. This, and it's so it best blocker, best swinger. We'll give it Trample with Lisette, and then, I mean, it gets even closer to Ugh. Satalpa. So listen, Voice of the Blessed is is very strong. Yeah, yeah, huge. Um, and this card, this next card is a card that has never worked for me and always seems to work for other people, and I hope it works <laughs> for you, Bert. Uh, this is Dawn of Hope. Dawn of Hope is a two-mana enchantment, one in a white. This is whenever you gain life, you may pay two generic mana, and if you do, draw a card. And for three in a white, you can create a one-one white soldier creature token with lifelink. Um, so the card draw to having to pay two, I, I hate paying extra mana to draw my cards, but if you have a lot of mana, uh, to spend, sure. Why not draw some cards? But I think that the big advantage here is actually being able to create the one, one, uh, white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. Those are going to trigger your archangel of Thune and your life sets yes. around there. So, um, and that's maybe what you're going to be gaining the life from, but have the backup to, to, um, draw some extra cards really strong. Even sometimes just having a chump blocker is all you need. You're like, oh, I yeah. just need one creature right now because I'm going to die to commander damage or something. Just give me a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's that's why, all I need. That's why people like Castle Ardenvale so much in commander right now. So too. strong. Yeah. So strong. Now let's look at some cards that care about the end step. So Crested Sun Mare, a 5-5 five, five horse for three white white. It says other horses have indestructible. And at the beginning of each end step, if you gained life this turn create a five five white horse creature token so this is each end step and if you have out your soul sisters you gain life whenever a creature enters the battlefield under anyone's control obviously aside from the lunark veteran because that one requires it come into play under your control but you're going to make a bunch of indestructible five five white horse creature tokens and crested sun mare also overtakes games if you leave it uncontested yes if you played hour of devastation draft or or sealed you know that you probably lost to this card um and if you played this in commander you've probably lost to this card this is a really good card it's important to note that crested sunmare itself does not have indestructible um i think a lot of the times i do see this in token strategy decks and they just make a second copy of crested sunmare because they'll just make each other indestructible exactly exactly so this is why we run exile board wives this is why farewell is such a good card right now yes uh, so um, crested sunmare will win games folks play ugh, crested sunmare it is a house uh so we also have a couple of uh, angels to talk about here resplendent angel is the first for one white white you get a three three flying angel this is at the beginning of each end step if you gained five or more life this turn create a four four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance and has an activatable ability of three white 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 until end of turn resplendent angel gets plus two plus two and gains lifelink um, in standard and in sealed and in draft, that activatable ability is very, very relevant to get yes. Resplendent Angel up to that five uh, power with lifelink uh, in order to actually trigger itself and get the free angel at end step. But at the same time, you have so much lifelink in here and that's a six mana sink uh, on your turn. You're probably not going to use it much, but it is important to just keep it in the back of your head if you have, you know eight life left or something and someone swings at a resplendent angel make sure they don't have 12 mana to spend on this activatable ability exactly resplendent angel is great and the next angel that we have is valkyrie harbinger so this is a four five angel cleric for four white white six mana flying and lifelink and it says at the beginning of each end step if you gained four or more life this turn create a four four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance so also really solid does everything that this deck is looking for um, can't can't say much more. It, it's really it's double the cost of Resplendent Angel initially, mm -hmm. but only has to gain four life to trigger, and already has life link in is at power four. So is this one better? I'm not sure. I I think both work perfectly with the deck. Yeah, they certainly do. Um, 
We also have a unicorn here, which thinking about it, unicorns should probably also be horses for the purposes of Crested <laughs> Sunmare. But un- this unicorn, Lathlil the Bounteous Dawn, for two, a green and a white. You get a 2-2 two, two unicorn with life links. This is at the beginning of each end step. If you gained life this turn, distribute up to that many plus one plus one counters among any number of other target creatures. So if you gain 50 life, you get to distribute 50 plus one plus one counters. The only kind of downside I see here is it does happen at your end step so you don't get to do the plus one plus one counters before you swing for combat but you know we'll get there exactly and then we have witch of the moors which is a four four human warlock for three black black it has death touch and at the beginning of your end step if you gain life this turn each opponent sacrifices a creature and you return one target creature from your graveyard to your hand so again if you lose one of those soul sisters which is kind of like the engine of the deck or even one of these more powerful creatures that is kind of working off of that engine you can get them back at the same time as forcing someone to sacrifice the number of times that 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 incremental sacrifice has really messed up my game plan is Mm -hmm. a lot um I just played against this. We played against this at um, MTG, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, at Command Fest Indie. I played against the Witch of the Moors, and this this did work. So this works really well with this deck. Yeah, I call this. I call it. I like to call this one Life Bag Marauder. It's very similar to a Flesh. Bag oh sure, Marauder, but for for life gain. Um, we also have here uh, as the final um, end step trigger uh, a card called Cosmos Elixir. So for four generic mana, you have an artifact that says at the beginning of your end step, draw a card if your life total is greater than your starting life total. Otherwise, you gain two life. So there's a really good chance your life total is going to be greater than 40 uh, because you have so much life gain strategy in here. So it's probably just going to be an extra card draw at your end step, which is a very regal thing to do. Eh, eh, Monarch, you know, get it, get it. Um, And if... And if not, it's going to gain you two life and maybe trigger a bunch of your stuff. Um, Later on in this episode, we're going to talk about some ways that we're going to pay life. And it might even be advantageous for you to pay life to get under 40 life so that you can gain the two life and get an extra life gain trigger. So Cosmos Elixir can be very open-ended that way. Exactly. Now let's talk about some cards that care about combat life gain so the first up is righteous valkyrie a 2-4 flying angel cleric for two and a white it has whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control you gain life equal to that creature's toughness and as long as you have seven life more than your starting life total creatures you control get plus two plus two so this really cares about having that much life so that during combat your creatures get that pump i think this works out really well yeah there's like four or five angels and clerics in this deck to actually gain you the life from that uh that first part but yeah it's definitely about that plus two plus two static on this one um i think we're going to talk about our first like definitely this is a win con card here uh, and that's blossoming bog beast for four and a green you get a three three beast that says whenever blossoming bog beast attacks you gain two life then creatures you control gain trample and get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the amount of life you gained this turn so we understand that there is a lot of combat life gain strategy in this deck so you're not really going to get to take advantage of that unless you somehow have extra combat in these color combinations you're probably not going to be able to do that Um, but you know even gaining 10 life in main phase one you're going to gain two life when (laughs) bog beast swings and everything gets plus 12 plus 12 and trample so even your soul sister is now a 13 13 trample swinging Um, this is going to end games and be able to end games actually pretty early yeah blossoming bog beast is a really good card it also has fantastic flavor text that says as subtle as a bog beast wither bloom expression meaning crude and clumsy (laughs) i love it adorable bog beasts and finally we have willow dusk essence seer a three three dryad druid for one black and a green that has pay one and tap it choose another target creature put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the amount of life you gained this turn or the amount of life you lost this turn, whichever is greater. 
activate only as a sorcery. So it's incremental growth, but can also just be like a huge one shot. So if you've gained a lot of life during your first main phase and you say, hey, I'm going to tap this now and put a ton of plus one plus one counters on a creature, maybe Blossoming Bog Beast, maybe you put it on a uh, Crested Sun Mirror to keep it out of the range of maybe a removal spell, who knows? Um, Willow Dusk is just going to provide generic value to this deck, and I don't see Willow Dusk played a lot, um, and I got my first taste of playing against this deck just earlier this month, uh, or maybe last month, and uh, it does a lot of work, and it's very subtle. Like, you don't think Willow Dusk is the problem, and then you're like, oh, shoot, I probably should have removed that so this couldn't have happened. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, especially if you see anything that synergizes with the plus one, plus one counters, it's got to go. Um, the the quote-unquote downside of only being able to activate as a sorcery, that's okay. I don't want to block with Willow Dusk anyways. I don't want Willow Dusk to die. Willow Dusk has to stay out there and uh, make my big creatures even bigger. I mean, you can even put all these plus one, plus one counters on... Um, Oh, what was that guy we just talked about? Uh, 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 I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. The two <laughs> mana, the two mana uh, flying indestructible vigilance. Oh, voice creature. of the blast! Voice of the blast. You can put just you can skip gaining life. You can lose all the life, and we'll talk about life loss in a second here. And then put all the plus one plus one counters on it, and, and really just go to town. Exactly. Speaking of losing life, let's use our life as a resource. So if all that life gain, we, you know, we've used all that, and we've got all those bonuses. If all of those don't really get there, then the only logical solution is really to use that extra life as a resource to get some huge benefits. So uh, for card advantage, we've got cards like Blood Tracker. So this is a 2-2 vampire wizard for three and a black with flying. It says pay one black mana and two life. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Blood Tracker. And when it leaves the battlefield, you draw a card for each plus one, plus one counter on it. So if you're putting a ton of counters on Blood Tracker and then it gets removed somehow, either you block or you sacrifice it or, you know, a board wipe, you refill your hand. I appreciate that. And I don't mind paying a few life, especially when I'm gaining potentially 10 to 15 a turn. Yeah. Uh, this is the card I wanted to mention when we were talking about Willow Dust, but we hadn't got there yet. So putting all the plus one, plus one counters on Blood Tracker is going to turn everything there into card draw. And I love the way that it is worded. It's whenever it leaves the battlefield. It's the same wording that Toothy, Imaginative Rascal, has. Um, so even if it gets exiled or blinked or bounced or something like that, you're still going to get 100% of the card draw. So it doesn't matter how it leaves. And I really like that. Yes. Bolas is Citadel. Um, need I say more? No. Bolas is Citadel. No, you don't. It's so <laughs> it's... good. Honestly, this is one of my favorite cards to play. I don't play black decks often, but when I play this, everybody goes, uh-oh. It's that's always, that's uh -oh. the response, and it does not matter what deck I'm playing. Uh -uh. It, it's going to get so much value, and hopefully... I pray for all of you that you have no lands on top of your deck. <laughs> yeah, at least at least hopefully you played this without playing a land. All right, so Bolas <laughs> Citadel for three black, black, black. You get a legendary artifact that says you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost or its mana value now uh, rather than its mana cost. It also has an activative ability at the end that says tap it, sacrifice 10 non-land permanents, and each opponent loses 10 life very good don't don't ever forget about that activatable ability the number of times where it's like oh you could have won the game because all you had to do is tap it and sack 10 permanents non-land so you're gonna have to have you know the city's blessing amount of creatures or something out there in order to activate it um, but yeah i hope that you don't have two two lands on top of your deck because you can play lands or cast spells from the top of your deck with bolus's citadel um, I'm sure like maybe main phase one, you hit that second land on top, you go to combat, you draw some cards with your Timna the Weaver, you, you know, you get a new top of your deck and hopefully you can just keep going on from there. But, um, in this deck with the amount of life gain that you have, you're going to be able to potentially cast your whole, your whole deck. And every time you cast the spell, it might be one that gains you more life back and puts more permanence on the battlefield. And this is, uh, it's always a strong card, particularly strong here. Yeah. I, Honestly, I just play out as many cards as I possibly can. With of course. Bolas Citadel. I don't care if Until I'm going I'm to 12 life. <laughs> you know what? Come at me. And hopefully I can sack those 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. That that ability is relevant. Oh, yeah. Do not forget about it. Next we up next up we have Dark Confidant, a 2-1 human wizard for one in the black. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its mana value. Who cares? 
it's fine. It doesn't matter what the mana value is. I'm gaining so much life. If it's a boss, a citadel for six, I'll draw it. I'll lose yeah. six. Who cares? It does mm-hmm. not matter. This card is great. I like it. I wouldn't cut it. I wish I had more. It's just kind <laughs> of a pricey card. It is. It, yeah, it's typically played in constructed formats like modern where you're taking like a maximum of three damage off of the trigger. And even then three damage from 20 life is kind of significant. But taking six because you top decked a Bolus's Citadel from your 40 life in commander. Who cares? You have a Bolus's Citadel now and extra. You cards. probably already gained 40. Who cares? That's, that's probably right. <laughs> so speaking of life for card draw, here we have Sylvan Library. Uh, Sylvan Library for one and a green. You get an enchantment that says you pay eight life at your draw step and you draw three cards. No, it doesn't say that, but maybe in, in Bert's deck it does. <laughs> at, the be- at the beginning of your draw step, you may draw two additional cards. If you do, choose two cards in your hand drawn this turn. For each of those cards, pay four life or put the card back on top of your library. To simplify that, um, at your draw step, you're going to draw three cards. It does count as drawing all three of the cards. And then if you want to keep all of them, you'll have to pay eight life. If you want to keep two, you have to pay four life. If you only want to keep one, you don't have to pay any life, but you get to choose any one of those three cards that you want in or, or two or three and keep them in your hand. Um, in Bert's deck, I think you're paying eight life and drawing three cards though. Yeah, we're going to pay eight life. We're going to draw three cards and we're going to like it. Yeah, we do. I love it. We love it. I love everything it does and I want to do it every single turn. <laughs> Next up, we have Belladros Witherbloom, a 4-4 Elder Dragon for 5 black and a green. It has flying, and it says, at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 black and green pest creature token with, whenever this creature dies, you gain one life, which just generically is a great chump blocker. And then it has, pay 10 life, untap all lands you control, activate this only once each turn. So... You might need some additional mana, which is totally fine. You probably want to do it the turn you play Wither, uh, Blood, uh, Belladros Witherbloom because um, you're probably paying all of your mana to make that happen. Mm-hmm. But 10 life is nothing when you're gaining a ton of life. I like this a lot. Um, this reminds me of, oh gosh, what's the card that makes a sapperling at every single upkeep? That's um, what this reminds me ten- of. But tender it, Shoot Dryad. Tender Shoot. It reminds me of Tender Shoot Dryad, but for a life gain deck. Like, I feel like they fill the same role. Um, and it's a four for a flyer, a uh, big fan of this. Um, I, I don't, I don't have any downsides. I have no negatives. Belladros is a 10 out of 10. Yeah. A 10 life out of 10 life, 10 time. life out of 10 and, life. And although this deck doesn't, isn't really set up to take advantage of it. Uh, Belladros Witherbloom can untap your lands once on every player's turn. It, correct. So if you have a lot of instants, you absolutely can take advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, Command the Dread Horde, one of my favorite cards from uh, from Standard, Standard, which, which was played in a, an Explore themed deck. Um, it, it it really shines here. I still play this in a lot of decks, but it does hurt. I run a lot. this card. It's great. It hurts a lot. Um, so it good. does hurt only because you <laughs> made it hurt as bad as it does, though. Because oh, it, yeah. it might not have to. It doesn't have to hurt. I, I target at least four things every time. Me too. <laughs> So command the Dreadhorn for four black, black. You get a sorcery that says choose any number of target creature and or planeswalker cards in graveyards. Command the Dreadhorn deals damage to you equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Put them onto the battlefield under your control. So in a normal, in a normal uh, non-life gainy deck, this is going to be a, just a pretty strong reanimation card at the you know, late game where you can bring three really relevant strong creatures back from your graveyard. Maybe you have to pay 15, 20 life to do it, um, but it's going to be enough to potentially win you the game. In Bert's deck, I think this is like uh, the the Liliana's, uh, The uh, I think Liliana is only on it. It's like a nine mana sorcery. You bring back every creature from every Oh, graveyard. Rise, of the, Rise, Rise of the Dark Realms. Rise of the Dark. This is Rise of the Dark Realms, but also Planeswalkers, and you have to pay like an a, a ton of life, of life but it's fine <laughs> who cares it's fine we're here for it yeah and um if you do have ways just uh just a side note if you do have ways to prevent damage dealt to you uh this actually does deal damage not make you lose life so if you have a way to prevent damage done to you this actually is just a free um in in terms of life gain still costs six mana uh to reanimate all of the creatures and planeswalkers back to your side of the battlefield 
Yeah, I love it. It's it's a great card. I think it does a lot. It's hard to play on spell table, but honestly, yeah. with with the the popularity of dry erase tokens, uh, infinite tokens, we have some dry erase tokens. If you're a patron, it works really really well. Great mm-hmm. card. Play 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 this card more often. Next, we have Tivash Gloom Summoner, a 4-4 lifelink human warlock for 4 and a black. It says at the beginning of your end step, if you gained life this turn, you may pay X life, where X is the amount of life you gained. So you have to get rid of all of it. But if you do, you get an XX black demon creature token with flying. So it's just... It's just making more blockers. So who cares if you gain 20 life and you lost 20 life? Now you have a 20, 20 flyer that's going to kill someone on their next turn if they don't remove it. Yeah. The the part that you do have to be careful about is it doesn't care about like the difference of life gain and life loss. Right. So if during your turn, if you gained 20 life and lost 20 life and you're, you know, at 40 again, um, it's going to take 20 life away from you exactly you so you're gonna to have your life so if you gain two and lost 20 yeah. you're now lo- you're only get you're only gonna have to lose two but you're getting a two two demon then just just be careful like if you have your <laughs> bolus's citadel out and you're at 80 life and you spend 70 of it and go right back up to 80 or something like that just be careful you don't kill yourself with your tavash trigger that's all I'm but saying. you know what we love to see it regardless. it would be hilarious it really would <laughs> Uh, so Vona Butcher of Magan I, or Megan, I don't know which is the Megan. Megan, uh, I don't know. It just sounds like Megan, just pronounced differently. Butcher of Megan. Oh, that's brutal. It's Megan. It has to be Megan or Magan. Uh, this particular creature, I really, really love. Uh, Mythic from Ixalan uh, as a removal on a stick, uh, being a removal, repeated removal on a creature. So for three white and a black, you get a legendary creature, 4-4 four, four, Vampire Knight with Vigilance and Lifelink. It has Tap It, Pay 7 Life, Destroy Target Non-Land Permanent, Activate this ability only during your turn. So the 4-4 four, four, Vigilance and Lifelink makes it so that you can actually gain a little bit of life that you're going to end up spending um, to tap it and pay 7. Uh, the Vigilance makes it so you can attack and still have the tap ability. Yep. The, the the fact that you can only do it during your turn is fine. I don't want to block with it anyways because I want to make sure that Vona sticks around and I can remove more things the next turn. Exactly. I like I like targeted removal, having a few of it, and having it on a creature is is really, really nice. Mm-hmm. And finally, we have Toxic Deluge. This is a sorcery for two and a black as an additional cost to cast the spell. You may pay X life. All creatures get minus X, minus X until end of turn. So... You know, there's problems that are going to come up during games of Commander. Probably a creature with a bunch of toughness, and you Mm -hmm. need to get rid of it. So you'll have the life, pay that life, get rid of those creatures. It doesn't matter. This is probably the best board wipe here. And if you have a ton of life, it doesn't matter what their creatures are. They're going to go away. So Toxic Deluge. Big, big fan of Toxic Deluge. Now let's talk about some of our suggestions. So Bert said, did we miss anything? Is there anything that, you know, he could add to this deck? And I'm going to talk about my first, my first suggestion, a card that I built as a commander, I think works super well in this deck, which is Dina Soul Steeper, Mm -hmm. a one, three Dryad Druid for a black and a green. And it says, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses X life. So one, you're gaining a lot of incremental life over a a, a bunch of different creatures. You've got artifacts, you've got enchantments, you have things that are gaining you life. So each time you do that, your opponents are losing life. Dina makes your opponent sweat. I will, I will say I have had plenty of games where i mean i've played against you mike and you've gone oh my gosh i can't i really yeah. cannot afford to lose anymore um it all dina also has an ability you can pay one sacrifice another creature dina gets plus x plus o until in turn where x is that creature's power not necessarily the most important part here but bird has always said on streams m m m I, the drama and i think dina would take a huge sip of this tea and say yes you in fact are the drama mm-hmm. so dina is a huge addition i would play it i would play it because it just it just this is just generic value i love dina soul steeper and the flavor on it is really good and so is dina's tea yeah very very efficient mana cost can't can't complain about that suggestion i totally agree um my first suggestion for any life gain deck that I don't see this in is always this card. It's Pristine Talisman. It's a very simple card. 
Uh, it's a three generic mana mana rock that taps to add one colorless mana, but you get to gain one life when you tap it. So someone, Great. as long as someone's not playing Yarlock of Scorched Thrash, it's definitely just life gain every single <laughs> round. Uh, and it, you don't get to take mana burn from the colorless uh, dissipating, but um, there, there's definitely enough generic mana costs in this deck that this wouldn't get in the way or anything. I mean, as a three color, some, sometimes that is something you have to think about. Um, but just be able to gain one life, get an extra Archangel of Thune trigger at instant speed on anyone's turn, uh, maybe in the middle of combat. Why not? Exactly. So my favorite life gain card in existence, and I know this seems really silly, is Authority of the Consoles. I I have, I guess maybe it's tied, but Authority of the Consoles costs one white and says creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. This card's just, this card's just great. And it makes it really difficult for your opponents to plan out their turns because if they need to block something and Ikra Shadiki has menace, Mm -hmm. right? So they want to, they want to do something, but also they can't afford to take any additional damage and let you gain that life. They need to keep creatures untapped. It really messes their game plan and kind of makes life very difficult for your opponents when you play this card early, early on in a game. Oh yeah. Turns one, two, three, because it messes mm -hmm. up people's, turns four five and six yeah i mean it's 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 competing in the one drop with soul sisters and it's doing something very similar soul sisters is doing you're not going to gain the life when it enters under your battlefield but all your opponents enter tapped what's what now between this andy and blind obedience i know has your favorite uh it's my favorite extort. i love them both maybe maybe add them both because they both fit i'll be okay. honest i i like both but blind obedience is probably going to be my next suggestion <laughs> <laughs> okay so although bert does have all of the true soul sisters in the deck there are a couple of uh maybe we'll call them twisted sisters uh some some things that are not uh considered soul sisters in itself because they either activate a little bit in a different way or have a little bit of different mana cost um but there are a couple more that you could add the first one is ariok champion this is a white white one one human cleric it says protection from black and from red whenever another creature enters the battlefield you may gain one life this does actually say may gain one life um so if there's any reason why you don't want to gain life there there is that it's got pro black it's got pro red it does cost double white so it's double the mana cost of any of your soul sisters uh, and on top of that uh, the cheapest version does cost nine dollars and 43 cents currently so that could be definitely a reason why to not play it but the other one is suture priest i think this one it's extremely affordable it's under a dollar you should definitely consider playing this one over ariok champion i think even um, suture priest for one in a white you get a one one cleric that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control you may gain one life and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control you may have that player lose one life and again it is a may trigger so you can even use this as an ability to hold someone hostage and say yeah you could play creatures i won't drain your life don't worry about it as long as you don't swing at me of course um <laughs> And, and this is very on flavor for what we're seeing right now, actually, in Dominaria United. This is a Phyrexian creature, Suture Priest. Um, not, not creature type Phyrexian. Oh, no, it is creature type Phyrexian now. Thanks, Scryfall. Uh, it is a Phyrexian cleric now. So very on flavor for what we're seeing now from Dominaria United. Yes. Next, we have Accomplished Alchemist, a 2-5 Elf Druid for three and a green. It says tap to add one mana of any color to mana pool. And then you can also tap to add X mana of any one color, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. This card is very good. There are some other mana sinks in the deck that it works really well with. There's Scavenging Ooze, so pay a green, exile target creature from a graveyard. If it was a creature card put a counter on scavenging ooze and you gain a life. So it works really well with that. And it also works well with Shalai voice of plenty. So that's an angel giving your creatures uh hex proof and you get hex proof, but you have, you have a mana sink of six mana. So four green, green, you can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. So if you can set up the right, you know, kind of uh, order of cards here and gain a lot of life, you can, you can really utilize accomplished alchemists to do a lot of work. Yeah, downside being at four mana, but right. the, up, the upside, I think, is definitely there. Exactly. Uh, the last suggestion that I had is a good old rhino monk named Rox Faithmender. 
For three and a white, you get a one five with lifelink that says if you would gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. So not only is this, again, doubling all of your life gain, it's not like the cleric class that only said you get to gain one more life every time you gain. This is doubling your soul sister gains, doubling your eker gains. Uh, it also has five toughness. Uh, so if it swings in with uh, and, and doesn't get blocked and you have Ikra out, you're going to gain two life from the lifelink trigger and 10 life from the Ikra trigger. So this could be very well if you want to if you want to be really aggressive with your life gain, like I know you do, Bert, double it. <laughs> no, double it. Double life gain. Rock's Faith Member is such a fun card. Um, I don't see this a ton. I don't play against a ton of life gain decks. But I feel like this is one that would kind of trip me up because it's mm -hmm. in three colors and it's not just a generic. It, this one feels a little different than the life gain decks I play against normally. Definitely. So really enjoy playing against this. And that's going to be it for this week. Bert, thank you so much for being a patron and supporting yeah, our show. Honestly, we love this deck. Cannot thank you enough for being so awesome. This deck is wonderful. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um as always, if you want to chat with me online, you can find me on Twitter at Andy Flory. And you can find me on Twitter at Worm Coil Engine. And to all of you out there that listen to this, that enjoyed the deck tech, that enjoyed all of our notes, thank you so much for listening. And yes, we'll catch you next week. Yes. And if any of you are going to be at MTG Columbus in the next couple of weeks, well, let us know. I think that's actually in two weeks from the time of this, okay. this record. Is that it's next weekend, not this coming weekend. It's very confusing. Next weekend versus next weekend. Sep it's September not... September 2nd through 4th? September 2nd through 4th. I will be there, I believe, Friday. So if you're there, make sure you come say hi. I will have tokens with me. Um, Guardian Project podcast tokens and stuff. So make sure you say hi. And um, until next week, we'll see you all then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.